With noodles still crammed in his mouth, Fu Shiqin stared at Fu Hanjing who had spoken such an astonishing sentence. Oh my dear brother, you are getting somewhere. After Fu Hanjing finished saying the question, he returned to the study calmly. He acted as if whatever he had said had not been said by him. Gu Weiwei felt her forehead helplessly. This apartment was large and cozy, but she was definitely not going to live here any longer. Fu Shiqin sucked the noodles into his mouth and asked cunningly. So, is my brother delicious or not? Get out of my sight. Gu Weiwei buried herself into the noodles and put the empty bowl away after she had finished the food. Then she returned to the bedroom and didn't come out any more. After the noodles, Fu Shiqin took some of her snacks and entered the study. He kept stuffing the snacks into his mouth as he started to gossip. Bro, let's be honest with each other. You knew that Mu Weiwei is not hideous, didn't you? Fu Hanjing buried himself in his work, ignoring him. Fu Shiqin took a bite from the biscuits and continued with his analysis. So, you who never touched women, slept with Mu Weiwei at her wishes, pretending as if you wanted to turn her down. After Fu Hanjing heard the word, pretend, he threw his eyes full of chill towards the man who was so busy talking. What did you just say? I. Fu Shiqin picked up his cup and drank some water to go with the food in his mouth. I mean. Mu Weiwei was pretending. She also wanted to sleep with you. Fu Hanjing looked at him with a cold look, speechless. Fu Shiqin continued on, he was worried that his brother would not buy his words. She was driven out of the house because she kept badgering you. Now she has changed the strategy. She starts to back off so that she can look good in front of you, so that she can reach her ultimate purpose, to sleep with you for your looks. Fu Hanjing lowered his gaze and returned to his work. If you will still keep on talking, you can get out of my sight. I am on it. Fu Shiqin picked up the snacks and rushed out of the study instantaneously. Fu Hanjing folded up the file he had just finished reading and that was when he noticed an exercise notebook for high school students placed on the corner of the table. On the cover of the notebook there was a name neatly written, Mu Weiwei. At the end of the name was a lovely smiling face drawn in a cartoony fashion. He looked at the notebook thoughtfully for a moment and could not help but let out a small smile. Then he continued to go back to his work. At seven in the morning, Gu Weiwei woke up because of an urge for a bathroom break. Drowsily, she got out of bed and walked into the bathroom, took off her pants and sat on the toilet. After she finished her urge, she rolled her eyes and had just pulled up her pants when she noticed the silhouette of a man. Fu Hanjing wiped away his wet hair and saw the drowsy girl sitting on the toilet. He just couldn't help but notice the thighs and the butt of this girl as well as her pure and snowy white skin. Gu Weiwei blinked and groaned inside, is there any way for her to die a bit faster? Seeing that she was not leaving, Fu Hanjing frowned slightly, how much longer do you plan to stay? Gu Weiwei turned her head around to the mirror beside her but saw the reflection of this man in the mirror too. Frightened, she simply had nowhere else to turn to. If she stayed the situation would get worse. Therefore, she stood up, pulled up her pants and dashed off the bathroom. She even didn't have time to flush the toilet or the guts to pick up her lost slipper. Fu Shiqin was just stretching himself in the living room when he saw her running out of the bathroom. He suddenly came to a realization when he thought of his brother in the shower. Fu Shiqin looked sinister, Ha, huh, you sneaked a peek at my brother in the shower and you still claim that you don't desire his body and looks? Who takes showers so early in the morning anyways? Gu Weiwei argued furiously. My brother always takes a shower before going out in the morning. You snuck into his shower, didn't you? Fu Shiqin smirked. Gu Weiwei suddenly became speechless. 
Mu Weiwei did sneak into Fu Hanjing's bathroom whilst he was showering, so even if she had not done it on purpose this time, it was hard for her to prove herself innocent. The doorbell rang and Fu Shiqin answered it. It was Su Qian who had delivered the clothes and the breakfast. Fu Shiqin had his arms over Su Qian's shoulders as he pointed at Gu Weiwei. Su, guess who this girl is? Su Qian threw an are you an idiot look at him and greeted Gu Weiwei with a half-bowed back. It has been a long time, Mississippi Mu. Damn it. What made you recognize her when even I couldn't? Fu Shiqin was not convinced. Without answering him, Su Qian went to deliver the clothes to Fu Hanjing. And he also helped her to get the slipper back. A while later, Fu Hanjing came out of the room. He was dressed in a handmade blue business suit with a silvery gray tie which was worn well on him. The buttons of his shirt were luxurious and exquisite and he looked sexy yet well restrained. He threw a look at Su Qian. Have you brought the things? Su Qian took out a card from the pocket of the suit and gave it to her. I have asked Mr. Ming. Half of the manual is worth 300,000 yuan, so here is the money. Fu Hanjing took the card and placed it in front of her. That's how much the chess manual is worth right now. Take your payment. Gu Weiwei accepted the card and said sincerely, Thank you, and... I didn't mean what I just did, really. Okay. Fu Hanjing looked expressionless. Mu Weiwei had been too fascinated by Fu Hanjing, but now she couldn't just tell them that she was no longer Mu Weiwei. Therefore, she had to answer for all of the responsibilities of the previous Mai Weiwei. Su Qian had noticed that she was quite embarrassed, so he stepped in to help her out. Mississippi Mu, could you please help me with the tableware? Gu Weiwei turned around and walked into the kitchen to fetch the bowls and spoons. The moment she came out of the kitchen, she ran into a piece of news that was being broadcasted on the TV. The internationally famous movie Queen has been away from the screen for years because of a heart disease. Fans have been praying for her constantly. However, a couple of days ago, the movie Queen, Ling Yen, had a heart transplant surgery and it turns out that it was a success. Yesterday, she was discharged from the hospital and was gladly received by numerous fans. Gu's Enterprise hired hundreds of security men to keep order and Gu Siding, the president of Gu's Enterprise, as well as Mrs. Director of Gu's Enterprise arrived at St. Paul Hospital to receive Ling Yen. Gu Siding must be in a relationship with this Ling person. Fu Shiqin mumbled with clenched teeth as he carried on eating. Goose sighting was on TV for just a few seconds, but he already presented himself as an elegant noble gentleman. The eyes that had been placed upon her before were now upon Ling Yen who was seated in the wheelchair. Her heart that was removed from her was now in Ling Yan's body. As she saw the scene on TV, she couldn't help but shiver. The tableware in her hands fell onto the ground, scattering into pieces. Get the operation done, have it removed. It was this last word that exterminated her last hope of survival. The piercing sound drew Fu Hanjing's, and everyone else's, attention. Gu Weiwei hurriedly squatted down to tidy up the scattered pieces on the floor, trying hard to conceal her suspicious panicking and paleness. However, what she had seen kept on repeating itself in her brain. So much so that she did not even feel a touch of pain when a scattered piece ripped through the skin of her finger. Fu Hanjing approached her and grabbed a hold of her bleeding finger. Stop. Fu Shiqin grabbed some paper and found a bandage. Su Qian quickly tidied up the scattered porcelain on the floor. Fu Hanjing wiped off the traces of blood on her finger and wrapped up the wound with a bandage. As he looked up, he saw the girl looking rather pale with tears rolling in her eyes, as if she were trying to tolerate an unbearable pain. Fu Hanjing frowned and threw a look at Su Qian. 
Call he chi. Fu Shichin scratched his head weirdly. Does it hurt that much when you cut your finger? She had not even uttered a sound when she tried to run away from home by climbing over the wall at the old house. What made her so delicate today? Su Qian dialed the private doctor of the Fu family and then passed the phone to Fu Hanjing after the call went through. Fu Hanjing. Twenty minutes, come to Jinxiu compound. He Qi on the other side of the phone complained drowsily. President. Fu, I have just gotten off work after doing four operations. Can you have some humanity and let me rest instead by visiting the emergency counter yourself? It is urgent. You must be here. Fu Hanjing's voice sounded cold. He Qi took a deep breath. Then he was getting out of the bed and asked. What are the symptoms? Outer wound, bleeding, looking very pale. How did it happen? How much is the bleeding? Fu Hanjing thought for a moment and said. By scattered porcelain, about. Three cubic centimeters. The man who had gotten ready to leave on the other side of the phone got so pished that he wanted to smash his phone. I have a seven-figure annual salary. Am I just someone who puts on a bandage? You have only eighteen minutes left, or I will take back the funding for your new studies. Having said those words, Fu Hanjing hung up the cell phone directly. Seventeen minutes later, a man wearing glasses with unkempt hair entered the room out of breath. Then he threw a glare at Fu Hanjing. You better not get sick and end up being on my operation table one day. Or he would make him into a specimen. Ignoring his threats, Fu Hanjing pointed at Gu Weiwei who was sitting on the sofa in silence and looking pale. He Qi walked up and revealed the bandage to check the wound, felt the pulse and made a diagnosis. The wound is fine, but she may have gotten frightened by something. She will be fine in a while. Frightened by something? Fu Shichin mumbled. She got frightened because she had scattered the tableware. When he had gotten injured and been hospitalized before, his brother didn't even stop working to visit him. And now, when Mu Weiwei just lost some droplets of blood. He not only got He Qi here, but also postponed his work hours, which he had never changed before. He was being way too concerned, wasn't he? Gu Weiwei came back to herself, stood up and said. I am fine. You can leave now. Having said those words, she returned to her own room and locked the door. He Qi turned to Fu Hanjing as he watched the back figure of the young girl. Your love child. What a strange thing that there could be a girl in the world that made Fu Hanjing so concerned. Fu Hanjing threw a side, cold look at him. No. Fu Shichin became so frightened by what He Qi said that the steamed bun got stuck in his throat. Then he explained after he swallowed down the bun with difficulty. Maybe she is a girlfriend to be. Girlfriend. He Qi grabbed a steamed bun from his hand and asked in astonishment. Isn't he gay? The air in the room became scarily cold. You are gay, everyone in your family is gay. Fu Shichin instantly started to defend his own brother. He Qi threw a look at Gu Weiwei's room and whispered to Fu Shichin. Your brother is indeed a monster to have approached such a young child. Fu Hanjing was just walking out of the room when he said one last thing. Fu's enterprise will take back the funding for your new studies tomorrow. Hearing that his money for clinical studies was taken back, He Qi instantly ran after him. President Fu, President Fu, please, I was just surprised. That girl is pure and lovely and you are a destined couple. You indeed have a great taste for beauty. Fu Shichin, who was following behind his brother, was both speechless and amused when he watched He Chi trying to suck up to his brother without caring about his own image. Actually, 
He also had the same doubts as he Chi did before his brother slept with Mu Weiwei. After all, he was a man who was almost 30 years old and he had never dated or approached any woman. He even refused to get married. That was indeed too weird. Fu Shiqin had already changed his opinions towards Mu Weiwei, after she helped to distinguish the forgery and managed to persuade Ming Zong Yuan to give a hand in completing the collaboration with Wilson Group. Since Mu Weiwei was not that scary looking, he would no longer prevent her from running after his brother. As the noise outside the room faded away, Gu Weiwei relieved herself by crying loudly sitting on the floor, with her arms wrapped around her. She had been searching news about a land during the past few days. The Gu family didn't host a funeral for her and no one had paid condolences to her death. What was more, no one outside the family knew that Gu Weiwei was already dead. Even Gu Siding's mother, whom she respected and loved deeply, was standing out there for Ling Yen instead. Yes, Ling Yen had taken her heart, so she got to live on. She thought that even if she returned to them and stood right in front of them, no one was going to believe that she was Gu Weiwei. And she was no longer able to return to the home she used to depend on so deeply. The man who used to regard her as the apple of his eye did not love her as deeply as she had imagined. She cried for a while and wiped away the tears on her face. Since God gave her another chance to live, he did not plan to make her a wretched woman who knew nothing but to shed tears and complain about life. Soon, we are going to meet, Ling Yen. She got herself changed and went to Luo Chanchian's home to help her and Ji Chang with piano lessons. On the way home in the afternoon, Zhou Lina called. Mu Weiwei, do you still want your crap? Where is it? She had planned to get her things back from the Li family recently, but that girl had now come to her first. I will send you the address. I will toss them away if you don't arrive at 6 p.m. Having said her words, Zhou Lina hung up the phone. A moment later, a text came through. It was neither the Li family's home nor the Zhou family's home, instead, it was an address to a five-star hotel. She took the taxi to the hotel and saw Zhou Lina sitting in the lounge waiting for her. She was dressed in the latest dress of the season and had a Dior handbag with her, looking just like a daughter from a wealthy family. Where are my things? Zhou Lina stood up and walked to the elevator. Upstairs in the room. Come and get them yourself. Gu Weiwei followed her upstairs and entered into a first-rate suit, where she saw Mu Weiwei's luggage. We did have some clashes and feelings of unhappiness before. I am now returning your things to you today to make peace between us. Zhou Lina said to her as she poured two glasses of champagne. Drink up the champagne and we will cancel our grievances once and for all. Gu Weiwei took the glass and drank all of it. Can I borrow the bathroom? Zhou Lina pointed in the direction of the bathroom and smiled a sinister smile as she watched her going into the bathroom. When Gu Weiwei came out of the bathroom again, she had already started to wobble. She staggered over to the sofa using her hands against the wall for balance, losing all the energy to get up. What did you do, to the champagne? Something that can make you docile. Having said that, Zhou Lina opened the door to another room in the suit. Auntie, all is ready. A middle-aged, fit and wealthy lady dressed in a custom-made suit walked out of the room and watched Gu Weiwei who had collapsed onto the sofa from a commanding viewpoint. Gu Weiwei recognized her. She was the very one that caused the death of Mu Weiwei's mother after seducing her father. Not long ago, Zhou Meiqin married Li Jiaqing and she was none other than Zhou Lin's auntie. What are you doing? Zhou Meiqin sat down and said earnestly. Don't worry. We mean no harm. It is just that, we heard that you are homeless and have been suffering a great deal out on the streets, and you even have no school to go to. 
I am homeless all because of you. Gu Weiwei sneered. Without the Mu family's funding years back, Zhou Meiqi might not even have been able to finish school at all. Let alone going abroad for studies or becoming the director of Longxing Enterprise. But she was not satisfied with any of these things. She had seduced Li Jiaqing and ganged up with him so as to keep control of the company. After Mu Yao passed away, she and Li Jiaqing not only refused to feel guilty, but also got married and started to live together, occupying the Mu family's properties. What was she doing here pretending to be someone so kind-hearted? Stop being so stupid. I just want you to have a better life. After all, President Wang of Tianxing Media doesn't accept everyone. Zhou Lina looked at her disdainfully. She had been tolerating her for a very long time after she had embarrassed her in school that time before. Recently, her auntie helped her cousin to get in touch with this year's blockbuster which was invested in by Tianxing Media, and the director happened to be the multiple prize winning Yin. Her cousin had been quite popular, but she had always failed to get any chances to play in a movie. If she was able to participate in the movie, her cousin would not only get numerous resources but also a highly enhanced position in the entertainment industry. It would also be very easy for her to get the prize for Best Actress. In addition, Tianxing Media and Longxing Enterprise had been going through a very important collaboration recently and President Wang was the key point in this case. President Wang had eyes for her cousin, but her cousin was on a very promising road right now and she was definitely not going to please this dirty old man called Wang Weidong. Therefore, they sent Mu Weiwei's pictures to him and President Wang was very pleased. He wanted to meet this girl today. That was why she helped Auntie to get Mu Weiwei here. Since she had drunk the wine with the drugs inside, she would be at President Wang's mercy. With Mu Weiwei as the present, her cousin was not only going to get important movie resources, but Longxing Enterprise would also reach the important collaboration. More importantly, Mu Weiwei, who was her barrier, would also be removed. After all, her performance with the piano the other day would definitely make her an all-time winner if she ever attended the Capital Music School with her in the upcoming future. Also, after she became President Wang's toy, Master LV was definitely not going to like someone who had been in someone else's bed so many times, no matter how much he liked her now. Therefore, giving Mu Weiwei to Wang Weidong was going to bring them nothing other than benefits. What was the point of not doing it anyways? Zhou Meiqin checked the time and urged her aunt after seeing that President Wang was almost here. Lina, you can go home first. You are done here. Zhou Lina nodded, grabbed the bag and was about to leave when she sneered at Gu Weiwei one last time. Mu Weiwei, just stay docile and be someone else's toy from now on. After all, you do have a foxy-looking face for it, don't you? After Zhou Lina left, Zhou Meiqin answered a call and informed the man of the room number. Gu Weiwei sat there with a pair of drowsy eyes. President Wang from Tianqing Media was a very famous dirty old man according to the gossip newspapers. He was especially interested in toying with young maidens in their teens. Some reports once revealed how a young model became disabled by him and killed herself. After Zhou Meiqin took everything away from the Mu family, she even wanted to present her to such a horrible man. What an evil-hearted person. A few minutes later, the doorbell rang. Zhou Meiqin opened the door earnestly. Here you are, President Wang. A beer-bellied middle-aged man came in with Zhou Meiqin. He sized up Gu Weiwei on the sofa with a pair of horny eyes. She was indeed his type, pure and innocent. Her figure could be outstanding even in a competition with other stars in the entertainment circle. He had eyes out for Li Xinger from the Li family, but what he had not expected was that someone hundreds of times more attractive was in store for him. 
Zhou Meiqin threw a look at Wang Weidong's drooling face and understood that he was satisfied with her arrangements. So she said, President Wang, since you are satisfied with this girl, then the collaboration with Longsheng. Don't worry. Mrs. Li has been so considerate, so we will definitely collaborate with you over this project. We can do the signing tomorrow. Wang Weidong's eyes swam over Gu Weiwei greedily as one of his hands started to feel the maiden's slender thigh. The maiden was like a blooming flower. She looked so tender, pretty and tempting from head to toe. Gu Weiwei was wearing a pair of jeans. She felt like vomiting out of disgust even with pants on. Hearing that the signing was going to take place the following day, Zhou Meiqin thanked Wang Weidong happily and added, President Wang, my daughter Xing'er would like to act in the movie. Can you give us a hand as well? Xing'er has been quite popular and you must know that a movie with her in it will definitely win prizes. That movie was directed by a multiple prize winning director and if Xing'er played the leading role, the movie was definitely going to win prizes. With the important collaboration done, the Li family would soon become one of the nobilities in the capital city. She was never wealthy enough to be at some of the wealthy lady gatherings in Yuefang Pavilion. After the collaboration was done, they would beg her to be one of them. I will call the director soon. The leading role is definitely going to belong to Mississippi Lee. Wang Weidong was in a good mood. He agreed with every proposal. Thank you very much, President Wang. Zhou Meiqin smiled in a flattering way but threw a very cold look at Gu Weiwei. Weiwei, be docile. President Wang can help you with everything you need. That's better than being homeless, right? It is an opportunity no one else is able to get. If it is such a good opportunity, why not ask your own daughter to take it? With teeth clenched, Gu Weiwei looked cold in the eyes. She was lured here and drugged. Because she was a bargaining chip for Longxing Enterprise and Li Xinger's movie opportunity. She had to go through all the bitterness and they would take all the benefits. This was indeed a fine plan. Wang Weidong was too eager and couldn't wait any longer. He threw an impatient look at Zhou Meiqin and indicated that she should leave as soon as possible, so that he would not be disturbed. I will be waiting for your good news tomorrow. Zhou Meiqin left in full glee. She just couldn't wait to inform her baby daughter of this wonderful piece of news. However, before she even reached the doorstep, a drilling scream from Wang Weidong arose in the room. Zhou Meiqin returned in a hurry and saw that the girl, who had been too weak to fight back a minute ago, had taken a hold of Wang Weidong's hair and banged his head against the wall. Blood gushed out of Wang Weidong's head and he passed out. President Wang President Wang Zhou Meiqin kneeled down by Wang Weidong's side and glared at Gu Weiwei who had hurt him so badly. Do you know how important this man is? Are you planning to drag the entire family down with you? They had spent so much effort to get in touch with President Wang and now she had ruined everything. Since you want me to suffer, then we can suffer together. Gu Weiwei pulled out a napkin and wiped off the traces of blood on her hands slowly. She had been kidnapped before when she was little, so the Gu family had hired a martial arts teacher who had subsequently taught her how to defend herself so that she could get out of danger when it came. Yet she had always been under the protection of the Gu family's bodyguards, and even when she was on an outing, her master would be with her too. With martial arts skills, she always lacked the opportunity of using them, until today. Didn't you, already drink the wine? Zhou Meiqin noticed that her eyes were clear and bright, nothing like someone who had been drugged. She saw with her own eyes through the crack of the door that she drank the entire contents of the cup. With that amount of drugs inside her, she would hardly have any strength to beat anyone up. I did, but I spat it out later. She had been aware that Zhou Lina would not have such a good heart. 
so she drank up the wine in front of her face to make her believe her. A moment afterwards, she went into the bathroom to spit out the drink. Although she also vomited out her lunch. In this way, their true faces were shown. At the beginning, she could have just grabbed her things and left, because Zhou Lina would never have been able to stop her either. However, she would rather stay to see what they were up to anyway. They thought that Mu Weiwei was homeless and an orphan, so that was why she could be at their mercy. However, she was not the Mu Weiwei who was going to be at their mercy at all. Zhou Meiqin could not help but shiver when she caught sight of the girl's piercing look. I am kind-hearted enough to find you a good place to stay seeing that you are now homeless. Yet you not only refuse to accept my kindness, but have also hurt people. Oh really? Gu Weiwei sneered as she approached her step by step. Mrs. Li is indeed considerate. Zhou Meiqin took a step backwards out of instinct and retreated into the bedroom. She had wanted to lock the door to ask for help when Gu Weiwei kicked the door open and entered the room. Gu Weiwei threw a look at the various kinds of S asterisk X toys on the bed, picked up a pair of handcuffs and said with a smile, Since Mrs. Lee is so considerate, I must repay you with something too. Having said those words, she gave a violent push to Zhou Meiqin who ended up falling on the bed. Then she took one of her hands and handcuffed it to one side of the bed and the other to the other side of the bed. Zhou Meiqin was older than she was but she had been used to living a cozy life, so she was unable to fight back at all. Mu Weiwei, what are you doing? Your father will punish you if you keep making a mess. He was no longer my father ever since he slept with you. So stop saying that he is my father and you are my godmother. I am so disgusted by all of you. Gu Weiwei handcuffed Zhou Meiqin and found a pair of scissors from under the bed. Then she sat down next to Zhou Meiqin. Zhou Meiqin began to shiver at the sight of the sharp blades in her hands. She started to try to persuade Mu Weiwei by putting forward some so-called reasonable arguments. I never asked the Mu family to help me. The Mu family had been totally voluntary. Your father and I really love each other. We had tried not to hurt your mother, otherwise we would. Be asterisk tch and filth. May your true love last forever. Gu Weiwei said as she slowly cut open Zhou Meiqin's expensive custom-made dress, so that her plump body was revealed little by little. Finally, she only had a pair of lacy underpants left on. Stop it now, Mu Weiwei. Stop now, help. Help. Someone help. Seeing that the situation was going against her plans, Zhou Meiqin became so scared that she turned pale. She cried out for help hysterically. However, what she had forgotten was that she had found a suite with the greatest soundproofing just in case Mu Weiwei refused to obey Wang Weidong. Therefore, no matter how loud she cried, no one could hear her voice. After preparing her, Mu Weiwei dragged Wang Weidong who had passed out into the room. In full force, she carried the man onto the bed so that he laid upon Zhou Meiqin's pure and white body. Zhou Meiqin lost her mind and started to scream. However, her hands were restrained and she was totally unable to push that chubby old man away from her. Gu Weiwei took out the cell phone and snapped some pictures of this flirty couple, from different angles too. Zhou Meiqin was totally frightened. She had ruined her makeup and her voice had become hoarse. Then she started to beg for mercy. Weiwei, please let me go, I will let you stay at my place and help you go to school. Didn't you always want to study in Italy? We will help you with everything. Gu Weiwei took a look at the scattered clothes and wiped off the tears from her face as she sneered. My mother was fooled by your terrible acting skills for so many years. You pretended to be her best friend yet you hooked up with Li Jiaqing on the sly, robbed her of the Mu family's properties. 
Do you expect that I will believe you now and let you go? I am serious. If you do not like President Wong, I as your godmother will not force you to keep him company. I saw you growing up and I even hugged you before. Zhou Meiqin knew that being harsh to her would not help at all. So she started to behave sentimentally, hoping that she would be soft-hearted and let her go. Gu Weiwei wiped off her makeup. Look at your ruined makeup. President Wang will be so disappointed later. Mu Weiwei, you damn maniac of a woman. I will punish you to death if anything happens to me. So will President Wang. If you do not want to die, try me. Zhou Meiqin was so annoyed that she almost cracked her teeth. Gu Weiwei picked up Zhou Meiqin's Hermes handbag leisurely and found the remaining drug powder inside. You drugged me with this, didn't you? Having said this, she then poured a glass of champagne. Then she poured the powder into the glass and came over to the bedside with the glass in her hand. Zhou Meiqin shook her head in fright at the sight of the cup. Get it away from me, I am not drinking it. Never. Don't worry, I am leaving this wonderful thing to this most important guest of yours. Having said the words, Gu Weiwei grabbed hold of Wang Weidong's face and poured the drink down into Wang Weidong's throat. Wang Weidong woke up after being choked by the champagne. With one hand on his forehead, he pointed at Gu Weiwei by the bedside with the other. You filthy girl. President Wang, catch her now. Wang Weidong turned to the woman who was speaking. As the supple body of the woman greeted his eyes, he suddenly felt like he was burning up. The drug had started to work, and Wang Weidong was too possessed to talk with Gu Weiwei. Like a wild beast, he threw himself upon Zhou Meiqin. Zhou Meiqin screamed out of humiliation and turned to Gu Weiwei with a pair of sharp eyes. Mu Weiwei, you are going to hell. Hell. Mrs. Li, just enjoy this wonderful, wonderful night. Gu Weiwei sneered and shut the door. She took hold of her luggage and left the suit without taking a look back. It was already nine o'clock at night when she came back to Jinchou compound. Although she had spat out the wine she had drunk, there was still some lingering in her stomach. She currently felt as if a flame was rushing across her body. Even if she had the air conditioner on to the lowest degree, she still found it very difficult to fall asleep in bed. What was worse, as time went by, she became increasingly thirsty and anxious. Gu Weiwei got up from the bed and had the bathtub filled with cold water. Then she poured some ice cubes from the fridge into the bathtub as well. She threw herself into the freezing cold water, so that the unbearable heat slowly went down. Previously, she had thought that no matter what trouble she was in and what danger she had to face, Gu Siding would find her and keep her safe. But right now, he would not come or seek for her. He was protecting Ling Yen, who had killed her and survived by taking out her heart. Without the identity of being the daughter of the Gu family, she was no longer cared about and no one would be concerned whether or not she was alive or dead, happy or wronged. Sitting in the freezingly cold bathtub with her arms wrapped around her knees, she was totally unaware of the cell phone that had been vibrating multiple times out in the living room. At Fu's Enterprise Fu Hanjing suddenly remembered that he had left one file behind at Jinshou Compound before he left the company. Since he needed the file early next morning, he called Mu Weiwei and wanted her to find the file first, so that Su Qian could go and get the file the next morning before heading towards the company. However, the cell phone kept ringing and no one answered it. Since the calls did not go through, Fu Hanjing drove to Jinshou compound himself. The moment he opened the door of the apartment, he frowned at the freezing air that greeted his face. The entire apartment was as cold as an ice house. He switched off the air conditioner and went to the study to look for the file. 
Before he left, he found the door to Gu Weiwei's room opened. So he took a step forward to look inside it. Only to find that the room was empty. Mu Weiwei. The light was on, so was the air conditioning. But where was the girl? He looked around the apartment and eventually came to the bathroom and knocked on the door. Mu Weiwei. He knocked a few times but no one inside spoke, but the door was locked from inside. He put down the file and went straight into the study to find the backup key, which he opened the door with. The moment he pushed the door open, he found the girl completely soaked in the bathtub full of scattered ice, curled up. She looked completely pale and her lips had turned purple. What are you doing? Gu Weiwei looked at the man who broke in with surprise, turned her head away and trembled breathlessly. None of your business. Get out of here. Fu Hanjing grabbed the hanging towel. Then he came over to her and pulled her up from the ice water and wrapped her in it. As the air of a man approached her again, she felt that the heat inside her arose once again, turning into a large flame from cracking sparks. Mu Weiwei even thought of the first time she slept with him at night, and the scene kept entering her head. The heat she had just cooled down burst out inside her body. Get off me. I am drugged, do you want me to rape you? Having said those words, she couldn't wait to leave the space she shared with him. In case she lost her rationality and would do something unreasonable with him. However, her legs had frozen and become numb. One step made her collapse. Fu Hanjing took hold of the girl who was on the verge of falling down and took her into his arms with a sunken face. He carried her all the way into the bedroom and put her onto the bed. Can you take off your own clothes? Gu Weiwei glared at this man who always spoke something surprising. Fu Hanjing tossed a handful of sleeping gowns over to her and turned himself away from her, standing still. Get dressed, we are going to the hospital. It's none of your business, just leave. Gu Weiwei turned him down with a cold voice. She really did not want to be around this man anymore. Fu Hanjing ignored her protests and said with force. Will you do it or I will do it? With clenched, Gu Weiwei stretched out her frozen hands and tried to unbutton her wet gown. But it seemed that the buttons were trying to trick her somehow, so that she failed to unbutton a single one after a long time. After several minutes, Fu Hanjing turned around a little and looked at her. Seeing that she had not yet gotten changed, he came over to her and helped her to remove the wet clothes. Then he, without changing a single expression, wiped off the water on her with the towel and put on the clean sleeping gowns for her. The entire process took only two minutes. Gu Weiwei looked at the man who helped with the buttons. He was still wearing a cold expression on his face, yet she felt a touch of gentleness from him. Fu Hanjing was silent throughout the entire process. After getting her dressed, he took off his suit jacket and wrapped her in it. Then he took her up in his arms and started to walk outside. Gu Weiwei couldn't help but feel like crying when she felt his warmth and the coat over her. What she had not expected was that on this night, when she was feeling the most helpless, Fu Hanjing was the one that came to keep her company. As they entered the elevator, she whispered with a small sob, Thanks. After Ling Yen took her heart away and Gu Siding deserted her, she was again sent by the Zhou family to become someone's toy. So when he appeared at this moment and gave her warmth, she found it very cherishable. Fu Hanjing brought her downstairs in silence, put her in the car and buckled her up with the seat belt. Then, he drove her to the hospital which was attached to the Fu's enterprise whilst making a call to He Qi on the way. The car had the heat on, and Gu Weiwei no longer felt cold, instead she was feeling increasingly uncomfortable because of the heat. She looked at the man who was driving with a pair of drifting eyes. You better let me get out. If they continued to stay in the same car, 
she would not be able to control herself from lunging at him. We will be there soon. Fu Hanjing pressed the accelerator and sped up. When they came to the hospital, he pulled the car over and carried her out of it. However, before he was able to carry her out of the car, Gu Weiwei, who had lost all of her rationality, looked up and kissed his lips out of anxiety. Despite her terrible kissing skills, his soul shivered the moment her kisses touched him. This pure and innocent girl as he had remembered before was now a very lustful woman. Rationality told him that he should carry her upstairs and bring her to the doctor. But the girl's soft lips fascinated him totally. He Chi was picking them up at the parking lot when he noticed the two people tangled together. He let out a cough to remind them of his presence. Fu Hanjing let go of the girl's soft lips and pressed her into his arms. Gu Weiwei kept bumping against his chest, and the thirst that was pressed down a minute ago surged on again. Fu Hanjing threw a look at He Qi and said with a dark voice, She has been drugged. He Qi nodded understandingly and said, If the car is not large enough, my dormitory is empty and you can solve your problem there. Before he finished his words, Fu Hanjing threw a cold look at him. Give her some sedatives to calm her down. Hearing those words, He Qi threw a look at him incredibly. Really? Giving her up now? You may not have any more chances to have her in the future, even if you want to. Look at the girl in his arms, so lovely and so lustful, and he decided to give her up. Could it have been that he appeared at the wrong moment? If he had come a bit later, they would have done it in the car. Fu Hanjing carried the girl upstairs and let out a sigh of relief inside his heart, after seeing He Chi giving her a sedative. After the shot, He Chi threw a look at him. If you regret it now, it is still not too late. My sedative has not started to work yet. Fu Hanjing looked chill. You can get out now. He Chi snorted and left the ward. Fu Hanjing sat down on the sofa in the ward and called the leader of the Fu family security. Lei Meng, check what the Li family have been up to recently. Lei Meng became startled from the other side of the phone. He asked, which Li? Was there a Li in the capital city that was big enough for his boss to care about? Longsheng Enterprise. Fu Hanjing repeated. Lei Meng found it unexpected. What made an enterprise like Fu's enterprise start to care about a minor enterprise like Longxing Enterprise? I will do that now. I will report it to you tomorrow. Fu Hanjing hung up the phone and glanced at the girl who was fast asleep in the sick bed. He let out a sigh of regret when he thought of what had happened a minute ago in the parking lot. What was going on with him today? How could a kiss from a drifting-minded girl make him distracted? He had found her annoying before. But after she helped them to discover the forgery and complete the collaboration with the Wilsons in silence, he started to wonder what kind of person she really was. And when he ran into her yesterday in the apartment he somehow felt a bit delighted. It was three in the morning and Gu Weiwei started to have a fever. Fu Hanjing called He Qi again. A while later, I Chi passed him the thermometer and said, We must test the body temperature first. Fu Hanjing said, You are the doctor, do what you are supposed to do. All right then, I will do that. He Chi came to bedside, lifted the blanket and started to unbutton Gu Weiwei's gown. Before he was able to touch the button, he was stopped. What are you doing? Fu Hanjing looked chill. He Chi showed an expression of innocence. I am trying to test her body temperature. How am I supposed to do that without being able to put in the thermometer? Get the nurse. All the nurses are men today. He Chi said and was about to unbutton the gown so as to put in the thermometer. Don't worry, we are doctors and we do not care whether the patient is a man or a woman. 
Fu Hanjing approached him and grabbed the thermometer from out of his hand. Move away. He Qi moved away obediently and sat down on the sofa next to them as he mumbled annoyedly, Fu Shiqin broke his leg before and was hospitalized, but you never visited him. Now this girl is just suffering from a very small fever and you have come to take care of her in person. You fake brother. Have you ever considered how your brother feels? Fu Hanjing checked the time, took out the thermometer and covered Gu Weiwei up again with the blanket. He Qi checked the thermometer and said, Yes, she is suffering from fever. I will get some antipyretic paste and medicine whilst you can feed her more water to help to drive away the fever. A while later, the nurse on duty delivered the antipyretic paste and medicine, saying that He Qi was stuck in an emergency case. Fu Hanjing unbuttoned his sleeves and rolled them up before pouring a cup of water. Then he lifted the girl in deep slumber and made her lean against himself. Then he fed her the antipyretic medicine and a cup of water before putting her down. In the several hours following, he lifted her up to feed her water every half an hour. When the dawn came, Gu Weiwei opened her eyes drowsily and saw a cup of water coming towards her mouth. Since she was indeed feeling thirsty, she took a sip and then looked at the person who was feeding her water. Then she was so shocked that she almost got choked on the water. Fu Hanjing put down the cup and smoothed her back. Gu Weiwei found that she was leaning in his arms, so she instantly sat up straight. Be it because of choking on the water or because of embarrassment, she was deeply flushed. Seeing that she was awake, Fu Hanjing passed the cup of water to her. Drink it up. Gu Weiwei held the cup in panic and was suddenly reminded of the past few hours when she drank some water in dizziness. Could it have been him who fed her? By putting her in his arms. And something more happened to the water drinking. He took her out of the bathtub last night in the apartment, he got her changed and she kissed him too in the car on the hospital's parking lot and she was even on the verge of sleeping with him. Oh man, that didn't seem so nice. Fu Hanjing was too busy making a call to notice the changes in her expression. Gu Weiwei watched the back of Fu Hanjing with a twisted expression. How could she ever possibly do something so beastly to him? If He Qi had not showed up in time, she would definitely have slept with Fu Hanjing the night before. After making the call, Fu Hanjing turned around and saw her frowning deeply. Still feeling unwell. Gu Weiwei shook her head and stumbled with her words. I did not mean it, last night. What do you mean? Fu Hanjing raised his eyebrows. That I forced myself on you. I didn't mean it. I was feeling dizzy, and I would have done that to any man. Gu Weiwei tried very hard to explain what she had regrettably done. However, what she had not discovered was that the more she tried to explain, the worse Fu Hanjing looked. You would have done that to any man. Gu Weiwei nodded. So I really didn't have any desire towards you, President Fu. Fu Hanjing's face sank even deeper. Anyway, thank you, for last night. Gu Weiwei said gratefully. If she could she would have climbed off the bed and cowed out to him. Although, she felt that she was not in desperate need of help, to be honest she could have made the drug go away if she stayed in the bathtub for a few more hours. Yet he decided to carry her out so that she almost attacked him like a beast. But Fu Hanjing had been behaving very weirdly during the past two days. He put on the bandage for her yesterday morning and in the evening, he drove her to the hospital and stayed by her side for the entire night. Could it have been because she had, oh, well, Mu Weiwei had slept with him? She was just trying to rack her brain to figure out what Fu Hanjing had done when he Qi came with breakfast. Sister-in-law must have woken up. I bought some breakfast from the canteen, do you want some? Sister-in-law. What in the world was sister-in-law in this case? 
Gu Weiwei turned to Fu Hanjing out of confusion. She had been sleeping for a few hours and now she had become a sister-in-law. She was expecting that Fu Hanjing would have corrected He Qi for his nonsense when he turned out to be deaf to this title. Seeing He Qi here, Fu Hanjing grabbed his suit jacket and came over to the bedside. I have an important morning meeting at the company. Fu Shuqin will be here later, tell him if you need anything. Gu Weiwei craned her head out of the blanket and stayed silent whilst trying to figure out the title He Qi had addressed her with. She was frowning. Fu Hanjing saw her twisted expression and thought that she wanted to say something. Anything wrong? Gu Weiwei saw that he was checking the time, so she shook her head. No, thanks. After seeing Fu Hanjing off, He Qi carried the breakfast to her bedside. Sister-in-law, you can't have eaten anything last night. The porridge at our hospital is definitely delicious. Dr. He, could you please change the way you address me? Gu Weiwei reminded him, feeling displeased. He talked as if she really had been in a relationship with Fu Hanjing. Well, that is just a matter of time before you are addressed by this title. You will get used to it. He Qi said as he sat down on the sofa and started to eat the wontons. Gu Weiwei had lost her appetite after being called sister-in-law. Dr. He, President Fu and I are really not in a relationship. Fu Hanjing is a cold-blooded robot. He only cares about work. Do you think that there is any other woman who has ever been so well taken care of by him ever? He Qi ate and mumbled, and then he threw a look at the girl in the sick bed. As far as I know, you are the first girl, so what else should I call you apart from sister-in-law? That's because Grandma Fu wants them to take care of me. Gu Weiwei stressed. He Qi snorted. If I had not appeared in the parking lot last night, you would have done it in the car, judging from how deeply you were kissing. Gu Weiwei. An hour later, Fu Shuqin arrived. He stared at her for ten minutes by the bedside. Then he asked, How come you flirted with my brother again? Yesterday morning when she cut her hand, he helped her to stop the bleeding by bandaging and wrapping it. At night, he went to Jinshou compound to carry her to the hospital. Even he, as the brother, had never experienced such excellent treatment. Mu Weiwei threw an are-you-an-idiot look at him. I have no interest in your brother. No interest in my brother. Then why did you force yourself onto him when he was drunk from the banquet? Fu Shuqin snorted. It was impossible to believe her words when she said that she had no interest in his brother when she had been trying so hard to seduce him before. Hearing that someone was in the ward, He Qi woke up drowsily. Hearing what Fu Shuqin said, He Qi suddenly became incredibly awake. You really slept with him. Mu Weiwei truly had no interest in talking with these two people anymore. She had the blanket over her head and tried to fall asleep. But He Qi was already interested by the topic of gossip and so he asked Fu Shuqin further, I had thought that Fu Hanjing is up to something because she is pretty. But it seems that it was sister-in-law who had been up to something to begin with. Are you sure you slept with him? Fu Hanjing is well and fine in bed. Hey, what do you mean well and fine? You are the incapable one, okay? Fu Shuqin started to defend his brother out of habit. He Qi said, your brother has been single since birth. He doesn't date or marry anyone. He is a robot who does not even have any adult videos on his computer. When she gave him such a passionate kiss last night, he ended up giving her up. What other issues can it be apart from being incapable in that area? Hearing his words, Fu Shuqin threw a weird look at Gu Weiwei in the sick bed. This girl had been badgering his brother before, but after the night, she somehow lost her passion. Could it have really been the fact that his brother was incapable in that area, so she gave up courting him? 
So, he poked her blanket and asked. Well, you said that you have no interest in my brother, could it have been because of this issue? He Chi kept asking curiously standing on the other side of the bed. What is his size? How long could he last? Gu Weiwei couldn't stand the questions. She lifted the blanket and sat up. Why not ask him yourselves if you guys are so curious? He won't tell us. Fu Shiqin looked serious. He kept on asking. You know the best apart from my brother himself. You have seen it and used it. Gu Weiwei was speechless and returned with a casual reply. All right, all right, you are all correct. Okay. Fu Shiqin collapsed. When God gave him a perfect appearance and an intelligent brain, he also deprived him of an even more important thing. He Chi let out a sigh of regret and said, There is an experienced Chinese doctor at the hospital who is quite professional in this aspect. What about asking your brother to check in with him and see if his problem can be solved? Gu Weiwei covered her ears, refusing to hear any more words from these two people. At seven in the afternoon, Fu Hanjing left work. He then went to Jinxiu compound to get some of her clothes and drove to the hospital. After he entered the room, he found the room filled with an air of strangeness. He placed the bag of clothes on the bed and said, Get changed, you are going home. Hearing that she was discharged, Gu Weiwei picked up the clothes and changed in the bathroom. Fu Hanjing threw a look at Fu Shiqin and He Qi who had a weird expression of sympathy on their faces and thought that something was wrong with Gu Weiwei. Didn't you say that she has recovered? Brother, He Qi says that there is a very skillful Chinese doctor at the hospital, what about having a checkup yourself? Fu Shiqin inquired with a serious expression on his face. Fu Hanjing frowned slightly. What made them make this pitiful face? It seemed that they were doing that for him, not for her. Spill it. Fu Shiqin and He Qi exchanged a glance, both looking embarrassed. No man would want anyone else to know about this kind of unmentionable disease. But since he already had the disease, he must have it cured. He Qi, you are the doctor, you can tell him the truth. He Qi said, you are brothers, I am not family, so you speak. If he irritated Fu Hanjing, he would be in big trouble. Fu Shiqin was his brother, and his punishment would not be that big anyway. Brother, I mean, well, Fu Shiqin stuttered for a long time, not having any idea of how to put it. Fu Hanjing already looked very impatient. What is it? Well, Fu Shiqin scratched his head, finding it very difficult to speak out. Gu Weiwei, at this moment, had just gotten changed and walked out of the bathroom. She helped the two of them finish their sentence. They wonder whether you have some problems in bed, because you have never had a girlfriend, and you are unmarried, and you never have s asterisk x with anyone or even have any adult videos on your computer. Fu Shiqin and He Qi both became petrified. That was the truth, but could she just slow down a bit? Fu Hanjing's face sunk and fixed his eyes upon her. Gu Weiwei felt a bit uncomfortable from his stare and pointed at the two people behind them. That was what they said. Fu Hanjing turned his head sideways and gave them a killing look, making the two of them shiver. Who told you all of this? Fu Shiqin and He Qi exchanged a look and pointed at Gu Weiwei. She did. Gu Weiwei. Seeing the killer look on Fu Hanjing's face, He Qi instantly made Gu Weiwei take the blame. She said that she has no interest in you because you have a problem in bed. Fu Shiqin added when he realized what it was going on. Yes, as she told us about it. That is why we are wondering if you need a doctor. Gu Weiwei's lips twitched. 
It had been these two dumb-headed persons who had been gossiping the entire afternoon and now they made her take the blame, when they found the situation was turning disadvantageous for them. Fu Hanjing stared at her for two more seconds. Instead of spending any more time on explaining anything to Fu Hanjing and He Qi, he asked Gu Weiwei to leave with him before he went out of the ward himself first. With a heavy heart, Gu Weiwei stepped into the car. She had thought that he would leave after he drove her to Jinchio compound. However, after he parked the car, he followed her back into the apartment upstairs. The moment they entered the apartment, she heard her phone ringing. She put down her things and went to answer the phone in the bedroom. Goddess, you missed class today. I have been calling you the entire day. Ji Ching called. I am so sorry, I was suffering from a fever and I have just come back from the hospital. That is why I missed class. Ji Ching and Luo Qianqian exchanged a few words on the other side of the phone and said, Goddess, where do you live? Me and Qianqian can visit you now. It is okay. I will meet you tomorrow when I get better. Gu Weiwei threw a look at this luxuriously decorated apartment. She found it very difficult to explain to them why she was able to afford this apartment alone, if they were here. Having hung up the phone, she went through the missed calls. Apart from the calls from Ji Qing and Luo Qianqian, Zhou Meiqin had called her numerous times too. Only now did she realize that one day had passed since she left the hotel the night before. When Zhou Meiqin failed to set her up, she was somehow punished. Right now, she must be seeking every way to take revenge on her. Meanwhile, Fu Hanjing had also received the report from Lei Meng in the study. Boss, I have checked what you have asked me to. Longxing Enterprise is aiming at a large project with Tianxing, and the contract was signed yesterday. Fu Hanjing closed the study. Anything else? What made Lei Meng confused was why his boss started to care about Longxing Enterprise. So he called Su Qian this morning and asked about it. Su Qian said that Lei Meng should pay more attention to the information related to Mu Weiwei. They signed the contract with Wang Weidong from Tianxing. Lei Meng paused for a moment and continued. They had planned to give Mississippi Mu to Wang Weidong as a present, but Mississippi Mu ran away from the hotel yesterday and Li Jiaqing's wife Zhou Meiqin and Wang Weidong ended up being in the same room until noon. Also, Wang Weidong had already sent out people to keep track of Mississippi Mu this afternoon. Having heard this, Fu Hanjing stayed silent for a moment before dispatching an order. From tomorrow onwards, get someone to follow her to make sure she is safe. He did not want anything similar to happen again. It made him feel uncomfortable when the woman he had touched was being coveted by someone else. Although Lei Meng was curious as to why his own boss suddenly started to care about Mu Weiwei, he did not dare to ask him directly. Okay, I am on it now. Having hung up the phone, Fu Hanjing came out of the study and ran into Gu Weiwei who had just come out of her room. She was on her way to make preparations for dinner when she found him still there in surprise. President Fu, aren't you, going home? I am out on business tomorrow morning after the meeting. Although Gu Weiwei found it uncomfortable to share the same roof with him, this man had spent the entire night taking care of her. And she was living in his place, so she couldn't possibly drive him away when Fu Hanjing refused to leave. So she opened the fridge, took a look inside and said, I didn't buy any food today, so you don't mind eating noodles for dinner, do you? Very good. Fu Hanjing didn't return to the study after saying those words. Instead, he stood on the spot and watched the back of the person who was busy making the food as if he were waiting for something. Gu Weiwei felt a bit awkward at being stared at like this. She threw a look at him. Could he have gotten so hungry that he couldn't wait for dinner? If you are too hungry, 
What about eating the bread in the fridge? Fu Hanjing waited for a long while and asked directly, after he realized that she was not planning to tell him anything. Wei Wei, is there anything you want to tell me regarding what happened yesterday? Gu Wei Wei thought for a moment. Although it had been she who refused to visit hospital the day before, this man had been showing a great deal of kindness towards her anyways. He not only drove her to the hospital and demeaned himself by taking care of her the entire night. So it was totally reasonable for her to show some gratitude. She wiped her hands instantly and came to his side, bowing. President Fu, thank you for helping me at the hospital. However, her gratitude did not please Fu Hanjing, but actually displeased him instead. That is not what I meant. Gu Weiwei was confused. Did he mean that she was not sincere enough in showing her gratitude? Don't you have anything to tell me about being drugged? Fu Hanjing reminded her. On the way home from hospital, he had expected her to tell him something. Yet she had kept her mouth sealed throughout the entire time. Gu Weiwei threw a look at this man who seemed a bit furious and said confusedly, I ran into some trouble. I can fix it myself. They were not in a relationship where she told him what displeased her and what made her miserable. Fu Hanjing pursed his lips, turned around and headed towards the study. Had he been too fierce when he was driving her out of Landscape Villa? That was why she was scared of him and tried to keep a distance from him purposefully. Twenty minutes later, Gu Weiwei had the noodles served in a bowl and went to knock on the door of the study. President Fu, dinner is ready. Fu Hanjing opened the door and came out of the study, he was greeted by the appealing smell of warm noodles in the living room. He felt hungry. He sat down and took a few bites. The tomatoes were boiled so that they tasted both sweet and sour, and the egg felt soft and tender, the noodles blended with the open and smooth texture of the soup. Although the noodles were not as exquisitely made as the ones made by his home chef, the bowl of noodles tasted like home. The light of the dining room cast a mild gleam upon the girl sitting opposite him, making her look so beautiful. That was something he had never noticed before. Seeing that he stopped eating after a few bites, Gu Weiwei looked up in surprise. Not tasty. It is very tasty. Fu Hanjing continued to eat the noodles and he even drank up the remainder of the soup. After the dinner, he did not return to the study to deal with the piles of documents but continued to observe the girl opposite him whilst sitting in the chair. Gu Weiwei felt his gaze on her, and she found it difficult to continue eating. You do not need to be so scared of me in the future. Fu Hanjing said. Gu Weiwei looked with curiosity at this man who was speaking. Had Fu Hanjing gotten possessed by something since yesterday on? He started to talk to her in a weird way and looked at her in a weird way too. No one spoke for a minute. Then Fu Hanjing stood up to get a cup of coffee from the coffee machine. The noodles were very tasty. Gu Weiwei smiled, tidied up the tableware and washed them in the kitchen. Mu Weiwei's mother loved cooking, and she picked up some skills from her. She had been living in the Gu family and did not have to cook for herself. But there was one time when Gu's sighting was suffering from a stomach issue, and that was what had made her learn to make some simple home dishes with the chefs. After washing the dishes, she thought of the deadline for the Film Academy application, so she said to Fu Hanjing, I would like to check something on the internet. Can I? Use the computer. Sure, go ahead. Fu Hanjing agreed without hesitation. He then headed into the bathroom to take a shower. Gu Weiwei took out the identification card that she had taken from her things from Zhou Lina, went into the study and opened the official website of Film Academy. She glanced through the requirements for the application, registered an account and started to fill in the application form. Since the photos and identification card were needed, she had to turn on the scanner and spent almost a whole hour trying to finish the application. 
Why Film Academy? Fu Hanjiang had appeared behind her somehow. As far as he remembered, she had always been a piano learner and the rumors said that she was gifted. The entertainment zone was too complicated for a girl to be in it. A dream maybe. Gu Weiwei closed the page, stood up and said, I am done now, thank you. This man was so intimidating that his appearance made the entire study fill with an inexplicable kind of pressure. So she decided to leave after expressing her gratitude. Hang on. Fu Hanjing said, and took a hold of her slender waist and placed her on the desk. I have one thing I would like to confirm, please cooperate with me. Gu Weiwei leaned backwards, trying to pull herself away from him. The man leaned forward and placed his hands on the table on either side so that she could not even get off the table. What is it? Can't we get another? Before she finished the words, the man took hold of her chin and forced her to look up at him. Then, his lips that were full of lust, were pressed upon hers without any warning and started to invade her lips and tongue. Gu Weiwei was totally dumbfounded by the kiss. Before she realized what was going on, the man's burning tongue had already reached her soft and tender tongue, so that her lips and tongue were full of the special scent of that man. She leaned herself backwards, trying hard to get rid of him. Yet the man leaned forward with her until she finally lost her balance and fell onto the table. The moment she was about to fall, a hand held the back of her head so that he placed her head gently onto the table in case her head hit on the hard surface. However, the man's invasion did not cease. Gu Weiwei tried hard to push the man away who had his chest lowered towards her, yet instead of getting him off her, she ended up releasing his bath robe so that her hand felt the man's sturdy chest. Annoyed, she took a heavy bite on the man's lips, and the sweet taste of blood soon spread over their lips and tongue. Startled by the pain, Fu Hanjing left her lips, stretched out his hands to wipe off the blood on his lips, looking gleeful. Then he pulled her up so she could sit up straight. Yet he still refused to let her go. Furious, Gu Weiwei glared at him, panting heavily. What do you want to confirm anyway? A patch of redness painted the man's thin lips, and he smiled, exactly like an unbearably enchanting monster. I want to confirm if I am interested in you. And she did taste much better than he had expected. Gu Weiwei took a deep breath, forced herself to calm down and said seriously, President Fu, I did do something stupid and offended you numerous times before. I apologize to you now, here. But I truly have no interest in you, none at all. Fu Hanjing stretched out his fingertips and brushed away the girl's loosened strands of hair behind her ears and showed a touch of delight. If it is because I did not show much gentleness the other night, please give me one more chance, and I am sure you will be satisfied. Honestly, it was definitely not a gentleman's behavior to have taken away a girl's virginity in such a rude way. Gu Weiwei became so furious that she shivered slightly. She was already trying very hard to stay away from this dangerous man, yet something had triggered him so that he suddenly started to flirt with her. President Fu, I approached you because I wanted to make use of you to help me with my revenge. Now, you can continue to make use of me. Fu Hanjing said with an unprecedentedly patient and mild voice as he stared at this girl's sparklingly bright eyes. I can help you to take revenge and get everything that belongs to the Mu family, but you must become my woman first. No need. Look at Li Jiaqing, any wealthy man is just unreliable. So I will get everything back with my own strength. Gu Weiwei tried hard to press down her anger. If she had not been aware of her own strength and status that made it impossible for her to beat him, she would have hit him hard at the moment. Now, move away from me. With your own strength. Fu Hanjing burst into a small laughter. I can make sure that you can't move an inch in this country. 
Ha, so what a president of Fu's enterprise can do is to deal with a teenage girl like me in such a mean way. Gu Weiwei said between clenched teeth. Businessmen are always tricky and they always do whatever it takes to get whatever they desire. Fu Hanjink showed a faint laugh. Gu Weiwei stared right into this man's profound dark eyes coldly. Then you can just let me die. I have already lost so much and I do not care if it costs one more life. Fu Hanjing carried her off the desk, stretched out his hands and touched her head as a way of consolation. Just go and sleep. Good night. Gu Weiwei went straight to her room, locked the door and blocked the door with all the tables and wardrobes. Mu Weiwei had put her into such a horrible position to have stimulated Fu Hanjing. After Fu Hanjing had forcefully slept with her, he was like an unsealed beast that went into his damned heat. Early in the morning, Gu Weiwei did not dare to open the door and walk out of her room. She leaned herself against the door, trying to hear if there was any movement outside the room. She planned not to leave the bedroom until Fu Hanjing was gone. Fu Hanjing got up early as usual. He was waiting for his clothes and the briefcase that Su Qian had delivered to him. With eyes upon this elegantly seated man who was drinking coffee, Su Qian asked, Should we ask Mississippi Mu to join us? Fu Hanjing threw a look at the tightly closed door. No need, she does not want to see me right now. Su Qian was not very sure about the way his own boss treated women. When Mississippi Mu ran after him all the time before, he found her annoying. Now when Mu Weiwei had stopped bothering him, it became his own turn to badger her. What a perverted idea. After breakfast, Fu Hanjing got himself ready for the company. He engaged himself in reading the material for the morning meeting whilst exchanging some words with Su Qian. Then he suddenly noticed a flower store on the roadside that was just opening. Pull over. Su Qian instantly pulled over the car, turned around and asked, What is it, boss? Fu Hanjing looked at the flower store on the roadside and said, What is the most proper flower to express the feeling of regret? Su Qian threw a weird look at him and answered based on how he apologized to his own girlfriend. Yellow roses or lilies? Go buy the yellow roses. Fu Hanjing said. He must have startled her the night before. Su Qian got out of the car, went into the flower store and bought a bunch of yellow roses. When he came back to the car, Fu Hanjing was already in the driver's seat. He grabbed the card from the bunch of flowers and scribbled some lines before stuffing it back into the flowers. You do not need to go to the company. Just deliver the flowers to the apartment. As Su Qian watched the black Rolls Royce Phantom joining the flow of cars, he lowered his gaze to the yellow flowers and then followed the orders by taking a taxi back to Jinshio Compound. Right, it was the first time for his boss to send a bunch of flowers to a girl, and it was an important mission that was not to be messed up. Jinshio Compound Hearing that Fu Hanjing had left, Gu Weiwei pulled away the tables and wardrobes behind the door and went out to freshen up. She was getting herself ready to meet Ji Cheng and Luo Qianqian. She had just gotten changed and opened the door and she ran into Su Qian who was about to knock on the door with a bunch of flowers in his arms. Mississippi Mu, boss asked me to deliver these to you. Gu Weiwei glanced at the delicate yellow roses which were meant for an apology and realized that maybe he was apologizing to her about forcing himself on her the night before. After a long time, Su Qian put the flowers on the table after noticing that she did not plan to take them. Mississippi Mu, it is the first time boss gives flowers to a girl, I hope you will like it. Gu Weiwei did not embarrass Su Qian. But when she thought of Fu Hanjing's words about going out on business, she still asked with a worried heart. Assistant Su, your boss is going out on business today. Yes, the plane takes off at 11. 
Su Qian answered with honesty. How many days will he be gone? Three. Gu Weiwei nodded. Okay, you can leave now. If he was going to be away for three days, then she would be safe for three days. But she still needed to find a place to live so that she could move out of this wolf's den. The moment Su Qian left she took the flowers, went downstairs and tossed them down into the dustbin. In the meantime at the office of the Fu's enterprise, Fu Shiqin and all the top managers were staring at Fu Hanjing's wound on his lips, totally transfixed. Fu Shiqin remembered that when he drove Mu Weiwei back to the Jinxiu compound, he did not show up at Landscape Villa later. And this wound happened to be on his lips, so there was no doubt that the wound was generated because of Mu Weiwei. Then he, with a gossiping mindset, sent a text, Mu Weiwei, did you sleep with my brother again last night? A minute later, Gu Weiwei sent a text back, your brother is in his heat period, get a girl to help him vent his anger. Fu Shiqin threw a sneaky look at his own brother who was in the middle of a speech and replied instantly, you are here, aren't you? Could it have been because of his and he Qi's stimulating talks that he went to Mu Weiwei for some pleasure the night before? Gu Weiwei replied, Goodbye, you are no longer in my contacts list. It was not until the meeting was over when Su Qian came to the company in a hurry. Su, you are not a guy who is late, what made you arrive so late today? I delivered flowers for boss. Su Qian said with a smile. After he said those words, all the top managers from different departments who were about to leave the meeting leaned forward and asked. Second master, is president in a relationship now? The wound on his lips must be from a girl, right? Assistant Sue, is the girl pretty? Which family is she from? Of course, my brother has an extremely great taste for girls. Fu Shiqin said proudly, showing an expression of pride as if he himself had gotten a girlfriend too. Second master, can you tell us which family is the girlfriend from? The director of human resources department smiled and asked in a flattering way. This was their president's first girlfriend and she might become the future Mrs. President. No comment. Fu Shiqin said in a mysterious way. It took only one afternoon before the love affairs of Fu Hanjing, the president of the Fu's enterprise, were spread over the entire company. When it reached the public relations department, the female staff became crazy with jealousy. Meng Ria did not attend the morning meeting and she did not arrive at the company until the afternoon. So she had no idea what had happened. She told her subordinates about the work briefly and said, I have something to do in the afternoon, you guys are on your own. You are going to meet Mrs. Fu Wright, judging from what you said on the phone. One female employee said enviously. Meng Ria smiled elegantly. Mrs. Fu said that she has a friend who was opening a club last night, and she wanted me to join the banquet with her. Did you spend the night at the Fu family? Another female employee asked out of surprise. Meng Ria nodded and replied with a smile, There was a family banquet and it was getting very late, so I spent the night there. She tried every means to showcase her close relationship with the Fu family. Manager Meng, the flowers from this morning must be given to you, right? When one female employee heard that she spent the night at the Fu family, she automatically associated the gossip she heard this morning to her. Meng Ria smiled. She did not admit anything, nor did she deny anything. Manager Meng, just tell us. The entire company knows that the president is in a relationship now and he even asked assistant Sue to deliver the flowers this morning, and you have brought flowers with you to the company too. And you spent the night at the Fu family and Mrs. Fu even asked you to join her this afternoon. Is there going to be a piece of joyous breaking news being announced soon? Manager Meng, are you going to be our Mrs. President soon? Meng Ria's elegant smile somehow stiffened. 
Who told you that this bunch of flowers is from the president? Assistant Sue was late for work today and when the second master asked him for the reason, he said that he went to deliver the flowers to the president's girlfriend. Also, Director Lin says that the president's lips were bitten and apparently it was from a kiss. And Manager Meng, who else could it have been when you spent the night at the Fu family? All right, all right, just get back to work. I am going to pick up Aunt now. Meng Ria took up the flowers and left the office, drawing a great deal of attention and envy. The moment she opened the car door, she tossed the flowers into the car. This bunch of flowers was bought by her as a present for the opening of the store. It was not at all from Fu Hanjing and Fu Hanjing did not show up at the villa last night either. She had just driven away the annoying Mu Weiwei, who else was standing in her way now? Gu Weiwei tossed away the flowers and received a call from Ji Qing, who asked her to come over to her house with Luo Qianqian. She and Luo Qianqian met first and then they took a taxi and headed towards Ji Chang's home. On the way there, her phone rang again. She answered the call and found that it was the firm voice of Mr. Ming Zongyuan. Girl, are you at school? I have asked for leave. I am outside. Gu Weiwei replied. Ming Zong Yuan smiled mysteriously, where are you now? I will ask my driver to pick you up. There is someone important I would like you to meet. Mr. Ming, I have an appointment this afternoon, and I can't be there. Gu Weiwei turned down the invitation. I told you about my grandson you right, he has just returned from abroad and I would like you guys to meet up. I have shown him your picture. Where did you get my picture? Gu Weiwei frowned. I snapped a shot when you were here last time. Ming Zong Yuan said unashamedly and continued to speak highly of his own grandson. Yi is a very handsome guy and his personality is great too. He is an architect and he has won many prizes overseas. Gu Weiwei put her phone away from herself and shouted, Mr. Ming, I am sorry, Mr. Ming, the reception here is very bad, what did you say? What? She hung up the phone and switched it off entirely. This old man was being serious when he said that he wanted her to be his granddaughter-in-law. She had turned him down and now he was pushing her. She was still a student who was yet to graduate from high school, and now he wanted her to go on a blind date. Luo Chanchan watched her switching the phone with a weird look. Who was it? You look scared to death. A weird old dude. He wants me to go on a blind date with his grandson. I am still young, okay? Gu Weiwei frowned, feeling troubled. She had to find a place to live so that she could move out before Fu Hanjing returned. If she couldn't find any accommodation, she would have to end up being in the school dormitory. But living with Zhou Lina and Zhu Xiaoqin sounded disgusting. That is not weird. Ji Qing claims that she wants to marry you every day. Luo Qianqian stressed. Ji Qing had been fascinated by her idol Fu Shi. Yet after knowing her, Fu Shi was now second in rank. She had become Mu Weiwei's most loyal fan, who was totally delighted to see her at any time. Gu Weiwei thought for a moment and realized that Ji Qing was really that kind of girl. Ji Qing was a lovely girl who had average scores and no big dreams. Luo Qianqian, on the other hand, was a rational and calm school student who had always had very high grades. She wondered what brought these two girls together as friends. They two kept chatting and came to the military courtyard where Ji Cheng's home was located. The moment she entered the room, Ji Qing pushed Gu Weiwei into her own bathroom. Goddess, I have got clothes and a towel ready. Take a shower and wash your hair first. Gu Weiwei said, I washed it yesterday. What was this strange way of greeting when the host forced the guest to take a shower as soon as the guest stepped into the door? Then wash it again. 
Ji Ching pleaded with her two palms clenched together. Gu Weiwei could not resist her, so she took a shower, washed her hair and got herself dressed into the nightgown on her request. Ji Cheng was in the middle of showing Luo Qianqian the present she had received. Look at this bracelet and this doll and all these brooches, aren't they pretty? Gu Weiwei threw a look at the bed that was covered by various kinds of small ornaments. They were apparently bought from different foreign countries. Luo Qianqian threw a look at them and said, So these are all presents brought back home by your extremely handsome cousin. Ji Qing nodded and said as she brought out the necklace around her neck. And this necklace too, look there are carved letters on it. Luo Qianqian threw a look at them and found that those were in Greek. What does this mean? Excellent grades for all examinations. Ji Qing said. Gu Weiwei took it and threw a look at it, then she returned it to her, frowning. To hell with excellent grades for all examinations, the carved letters meant my little angel. Silly girl, she was not even aware that she was being flirted with. Ji Qing took back the necklace and put it on again. Feeling excited, she brought out two more jewelry boxes. Stretch out your hands. Gu Weiwei and Luo Qianqian exchanged a glance and then each of them stretched out their left hand. Ji Qing opened the jewelry boxes and put a piece on for each of them. All of the bracelets had the same style. See? They are all the same. I asked my cousin to bring them back for me. Gu Weiwei observed her wrist and the exotically styled bracelet and said with a smile, Thanks. It is very pretty. Luo Chanchen dangled her wrist and said, Thanks, but I don't have a present to give back to you. No need, this is the symbol of our friendship. Ji Cheng had one arm over Gu Weiwei's shoulder and the other over Luo Chanchen's. Let's go and get changed. I am going to present to you my extremely handsome cousin. Why are we getting changed? I am not on a blind date. Luo Qianqian complained. Gu Weiwei nodded. I just got changed before I came here. My cousin's club is opening today and the occasion is way too over the top. So we have to look formal too. Ji Qing said as she took out the dresses she had picked for them previously. Why do you want me to look so cute? Luo Qianqian's face sank when she saw the pink and blue dress of sweetness in her hands. Well, it is the style of my wardrobe. Maybe you can pick another one. Ji Qing said as she opened the wardrobe. The wardrobe was full of rosy and cute dresses and clothes, making Luo Qianqian give up on choosing anything else. All right, I will wear this one. Gu Weiwei dried her hair and changed into the gown that Ji Qing had prepared for her. Goddess, I want to marry you. Ji Cheng's eyes sparkled when she saw her in her dress. Wait until you are a man in your next life. Gu Weiwei chuckled. My mother bought this dress for me, but I am not tall enough to wear this. You look so pretty in it, just like a fairy lady. Ji Ching said with excitement as she spun around her. Just as they were talking, her phone rang. She went to pick it up, still bubbling in excitement. Hello, cousin. Well, we will be there in two hours. Having hung up the phone, she urged them. Hurry up, put on makeup, we are out of time. Gu Weiwei raised her eyebrows. Makeup too. Ji Ching threw a look at her. Without makeup, Gu Weiwei already looked amazing. Forget it, you do not need any makeup, we will put some on. Gu Weiwei was happy that she did not need to go through the trouble after hearing what she said. So she threw herself down in the seat beside and started to search for renting information in the neighborhood around school. After a long time, she heard the two girls talking with each other. Ah, oh, I missed my eye line. Damn, my eyeshadow keeps on getting heavier. Gu Weiwei put down the phone and went over to help them. 
She helped them to remove the makeup they had put on, remove the eye shadow and help them with their eyebrows. I will do the eyelashes myself. Ji Ching said with a smile as she had her face between her hands in front of the mirror. Her face looked completely fresh. Oh, my eyes look very large in this way. Ah, oh, my goddess is good at everything. Gu Weiwei was in the middle of helping Luo Qianqian with the eyebrows, so she ignored Ji Qing. She was capable of doing what they could do only because she had learned a bit more than them and turned out to be a few years older. When the three of them were ready, Ji Cheng's cousin had his driver pick them up. The three of them went into the car together. After they exited the car, Gu Weiwei noticed all the expensive cars parked outside the club. This was indeed a very exaggerated occasion, just like what Ji Qing said. They were about to enter the club when a car pulled over, from which Ming Zong Yuan stepped out and said with a smile, Hey you, girl, why didn't you come when I asked you to at first? Gu Weiwei So, when Mr. Ming was asking her to go on a blind date, he was planning to have her and the blind date in this place. Ji Qing called out to Ming Zong Yuan when she caught sight of him. Grandfather, you are here too. Grandfather. Gu Weiwei raised her eyebrows. Could the world really be so small? Ming Zong Yuan looked at the three girls and asked, You all know each other. She is the one I told you about, the very excellent piano teacher. Ji Cheng proudly presented Gu Weiwei to her grandfather. Ming Zong Yuan came to a realization. So the pretty and skilled girl her granddaughter kept on talking about every day turned out to be the one he knew. It was true that families would always belong together. This must be the destiny of heaven's order for his sweet grandson. Gu Weiwei threw a look at Ji Cheng and then she noticed the bright smile on Ming Zong Yuan's face. She felt that she had been fooled by Ji Qing. Ming Zong Yuan showed them into the club and instead of going into the guest-filled dining room, they went to the backyard. It was a club decorated in the Baroque style, which created an elegant and noble aura. Sit here for a moment, I will bring my grandson here after going to greet everyone in the dining room. Ming Zong Yuan said with a smile. Gu Weiwei laughed dryly. You had better not, come back. After Ji Ching saw off Ming Zong Yuan, she sat down and pointed at the club and said, Look, my cousin designed all of this. Isn't it amazing? Gu Weiwei glared at her and said, So, you tricked me into coming here on a blind date too. Ji Ching let out an embarrassed laughter. Goddess, I like you so much, but I can't marry you. So if my cousin marries you, then every good thing will be in the same family. Gu Weiwei felt her forehead and said, Your cousin. She was just about to speak when Luo Qianqian asked, Where is the bathroom? My belly feels weird. Ji Cheng put down her drink, stood up and said, Goddess, sit here and wait for us. I will go with her. Gu Weiwei nodded and saw them off. Ji Cheng must have been too silly to realize that her cousin was into her instead of Gu Weiwei. And what made her bring her on a blind date with her cousin? The carved letters on the necklace and all those things for young girls. If a man was not interested in a woman, why would he be bothered to buy all of those things? Also, Ji Cheng had told them before that she was an adopted daughter of the Ji family, meaning that she and her cousin were not blood related. She kept talking about how excellent her cousin was and it was clear that they two were in a very close relationship. She was just thinking about how to get rid of this awkward blind date when someone approached her and sneered. Mu Weiwei, seems that you are indeed a tricky woman to have sneaked into such a place. Gu Weiwei looked up and recognized that the speaker turned out to be Mrs. Meng, who had been to the Fu family before. That was to say, she was Meng Ria's mother, Wu Xiulian. 
Wu Xiulian had observed her for a while from a distance and recognized that she turned out to be the shameless Mu Weiwei who stayed with the Fu family. It was said that she had been driven out of the house before, but now she had shown up here in this place. Because of her, Ruya's relationship with the master had somehow cooled down and she was trying to find a way to take revenge. Wu Xiulian approached her, looking disdainful. So which sugar daddy did you have to suck up to after being driven out by the Fu family? The people who were able to attend this occasion today were either nobles or the wealthy and so Mu Weiwei was definitely not qualified to come to this place at all. Therefore, she must have sucked up to a man so as to be able to enter the event. Gu Weiwei dug into the cake leisurely with her fork and put it into her mouth. The sweetness of the cake was just right and it must have been a product of a Michelin-starred chef, probably one with three stars. Seeing my Weiwei ignoring her, Wu Xiulian snorted coldly. Do you think that just because you have slept with Fu Hanjing, you are the daughter-in-law of the Fu family? Just because you are here because of a man, doesn't necessarily mean that you are a decent aristocrat. Gu Weiwei took a sip on the fruit juice and said calmly, I am not sure if I am a decent aristocrat, but the way that Mrs. Meng is talking is making you look like an indecent person. No women from any aristocratic families would speak in such a mean way at such a formal occasion. Who are you swearing at? Wu Xiulian bellowed with an ashen face. Gu Weiwei raised her eyebrows and sneered. Did I refer to you? As the two were arguing, many guests were drawn to the site. Someone recognized that Mrs. Meng was a guest of Mrs. Fu, so they stepped forward and asked, What is it going on, Mrs. Meng? Mrs. Fu often brought the daughter of the Meng family to different banquets and apparently, she had already accepted her as the daughter-in-law. That was why they should somehow flatter Mrs. Meng ahead of time. Wu Xiulian squinted at Gu Weiwei who was still seated there drinking afternoon tea as if nothing had happened. Nothing, just an arrogant girl who has sneaked into the party. Meng Ria also showed up when she heard the noise. A touch of hatred flashed across her eyes when she spotted Mu Weiwei. Although she had been driven out of the Fu family, she had still slept with Fu Hanjing and she had succeeded in getting the painting from Mr. Ming which had humiliated her in front of the Fu's. Seeing the crowd getting larger, Wu Xiulian said to the female guests who were the majority in the crowd, Watch out everyone, this girl specializes in seducing someone else's husband, especially ones who have a lot of money. Hearing the words, the female guests all turned to Gu Weiwei with a disdainful look when they noticed how pretty this girl actually looked. Gu Weiwei lowered her eyes and saw the tasty desert on the plate. Her good mood had been totally ruined, so she looked up and confronted Wu Xiulian with a look of coldness. Mrs. Meng, who do you think I have seduced, and what is your slander based on? Even though Mu Weiwei had courted Fu Hanjing, Meng Ruya was still not the formal daughter-in-law of the Fu family. Nor had she been engaged to Fu Hanjing either. Even though she had slept with Fu Hanjing, she had not seduced Meng Ruya's man. Yu, Wu Xiulian got stuck with words. She was just annoyed that this girl had moved into the Fu family and slept with the man her daughter had laid eyes upon. But if she spilled out the truth, she would humiliate the Fu family. So she couldn't just simply say that she had seduced Fu Hanjing. You know pretty well what dirt you had done. I am just trying to save your face. Gu Weiwei narrowed her beautiful eyes, showing a bit of intimidating air. Mrs. Meng, if I have done something dirty, you must tell me what on earth it is. If you refuse to point it out, then you better apologize to me. I do not accept any false accusations. Her aim was to be a part of the entertainment industry, and if the accusation was not clarified right here right now, people would think that any role she received was an exchange of s asterisk x. Also, she did not want to be considered as such a girl anyway. Seeing that the crowd was standing on her side, 
Wu Xiuyan snorted in a loud voice. Who do you think you are that I have to apologize to you? Gu Weiwei stood up with the fork and glanced at Wu Xiuyan's exquisite leather handbag. Mrs. Meng, your bag looks pretty. Wu Xiuyan lowered her look and said, It is the discontinued version of MG, something you will never get. Gu Weiwei raised the corner of her lips and looked on coldly. Are you sure you are not going to apologize to me for what you just said? Wu Xiuyan snorted proudly, I have said nothing wrong. Why should I apologize to you? Gu Weiwei let out a sigh of pity and stabbed the expensive leather handbag that Wu Xiuyan had been showing off with a silver fork, leaving a scraped mark on the smooth surface. She had been in a very bad mood recently. She could tolerate Fu Hanjing since she simply couldn't irritate him, but she couldn't tolerate a woman like this one. Wu Xiulian and Meng Ruya were shocked and screamed in horror. This is the discontinued version of MG, there are no more than ten available in the world. And you have just, just scratched it. The female guests felt sorry for Mrs. Meng and her ruined MG handbag, which was said to be the discontinued version. MG was the top luxury brand and during recent years, fewer and fewer products had been produced. Their products were also getting more and more expensive. A discontinued version handbag like this might not even be able to be bought no matter how much money one had. The discontinued handbag of MG. That must have cost at least 800 or 900,000 yuan. If there are only fewer than 10 of such handbags across the globe, then it might actually cost more than 1 million. MG has not produced new things for years and every single piece costs an arm and a leg. This girl is simply too fierce. She has ruined such an expensive handbag just because she was angry. The guests had now established a terrible impression of Gu Weiwei and even more so after they heard what Wu Xiulian said. Mu Weiwei. This handbag costs 1.8 million yuan, now even 2 million yuan does not buy one like this. You have ruined it totally. Meng Ruya confronted Gu Weiwei angrily. That was her bag. She had lent it to her mother and it was now totally ruined. Gu Weiwei tossed the fork back onto the table, showing no regret for what she had just done. If she had apologized to me a moment ago, none of this would have happened. So now, you are blaming this on me. Will you be dead or something if I scold you? Now you have ruined my handbag after a few words that I said. Would you have killed me if I had said more? Wishulian's heart ached so badly when she saw the scratches on the handbag. Soon, Mrs. Fu and the lady of the Ming family heard the chaos and gathered around. When they saw Wu Xiulian's anxious and angry face they asked Ruya, Ruya, what happened? Meng Ruya looked wronged and soon her eyes were filled with tears. Then she said, my mother saw Wei Wei sneaking into this place and was trying to persuade her to leave rather than staying and causing trouble here. She became annoyed and then ruined my mother's bag out of anger. It is the discontinued version of MG and it cannot be bought on the market. Mrs. Fu was born into nobility and she was pretty aware of the luxurious brand of MG. There had been fewer products presented by MG during the past few years, so their products were becoming more and more precious. She was actually quite jealous of Mrs. Meng who had brought the handbag here to this occasion. Did you really do that, Mu Weiwei? She said that I specialize in seducing powerful and wealthy men. What I want is an apology. Gu Weiwei sounded full of justice. She did not think that she had done anything wrong. What had Wu Xiulian said disgusted her, and so did this handbag. Those were just words, and you did not have to do anything like that. This is the Ming family celebration, not a place for you to throw your temper. Mrs. Fu scolded her furiously. It did not matter what fuss she had made at the Fu family, because those incidents were just family affairs. 
When she did something so humiliating at someone else's celebration, the Fu family would also be humiliated at the same time. And how would she be able to afford the handbag when she ruined someone else's handbag, old lady of the Fu family would have to cover for her in the end anyway. Just words. Gu Weiwei let out a cold laugh. She coughed through her hoarse throat gained because of her oncoming flu and continued on. She said I seduced a rich and powerful man to come here to this occasion, this would inflate as a widely spread rumor by the time the banquet is finished. This is something that I have never done and if I work, get into a relationship or get married in the future, women would consider me as a vixen who seduces men and men would consider me as an easy girl. Rumors go around so why should I not get an apology from her? In addition, she was planning to enter the film industry and if the clarification was not concluded today, she would have left herself a mark of blackened history. Why would you sneak into such a banquet if this is not your plan? Wu Xiulian said. She must be seeking for another rich man to support her after she was driven away by the Fu family and found that she had nowhere to go. Ji Cheng and Luo Qianqian had just returned from the bathroom and saw a group of people surrounding Gu Weiwei. They had also heard what Wu Xiulian had accused Gu Weiwei of. Who did you say sneaked in? Weiwei is here at my cousin Ming Ye's invitation and brought in by my grandfather. How dare you say that she sneaked in? Wu Xiulian threw a look at Meng Ruya, not sure if what Ji Cheng had said was true or false. Meng Ria was, after all, a manager of the public relations department. She was quite good at facing crisis. She is dressed like this and she doesn't even have an invitation card. It is hard to tell if she was invited in or sneaked in. Mrs. Fu turned her head and looked at the lady of the Ming family and asked with a low voice, She is here really at your invitation. The club was, strictly speaking, opened by Ming Yi. If she was really here at the host's invitation, then they truly were not in a place to scold her for anything. The lady of the Ming family thought for a while and said, The old master did say that he was going to bring a girl to meet Yi. I am not sure about the details. Seeing that the crowd still did not buy her words, Ji Ching waved at Ming Zong Yuan and her cousin Ming Yi who were approaching them. Grandfather, this woman said that Wei Wei sneaked in. They even badmouthed her. I brought her in. If she should not be here, then does it mean that I should not be here either? Ming Zong Yuan shouted with a serious face in a vigorous voice. He had meant to set up a blind date between Gu Weiwei and his grandson, but these people had now made such a mess that the girl might have run away. If that happened, who would make it up to him for losing a granddaughter-in-law? Dad, this is just a misunderstanding. Sorry, I was too careless to notice this. The lady of the Ming family came over to help Ming Zong Yuan sit down. Ming Yi was dressed in a black suit. He pushed up his gold-rimmed glasses and bowed to Gu Weiwei. Sorry that you have run into such trouble. Gu Weiwei smiled. I was being impulsive. Sorry for the trouble. Those female guests who had given a hand to Wu Xiulian all looked embarrassed at this moment. They had really thought that this girl was a vixen who seduces men, but she was going on a blind date with the grandson master of the Ming family, so why would she ever want to seduce any men? Mr. Ming was not involved in the political field, but one of his two sons was a high-ranking officer in the military and the other an important man in the field of politics. Ming Yi was the most beloved grandson of Mr. Ming and apparently, Mr. Ming was very satisfied with this girl that he might be taking her in as a granddaughter-in-law. As the host of the club, Ming Yi stepped forward and said, Please clarify all the misunderstandings and as for the ruined bag, I can make the compensation for not taking care of you earlier on. That woman said that Weiwei seduces men. When did you ever see my Weiwei seduce any men? Ji Qing glared at Wu Xiulian and Meng Ruya angrily. 
She would hate these two people if they had ruined the blind date between her goddess and her cousin. Gu Weiwei's lips twitched and threw a look at Ji Qing who was apparently more angry than she herself. Honestly, could she stop saying that she was her family's, when she was not? A girl's reputation is very important. And Mrs. Meng better have a good reason to explain what you have just said. Who has the Mu girl seduced? Bring him here and expose the truth. If nothing like this happened, apologize to her now. Mr. Ming sat on the chair with two hands resting on his cane. His back was straight and he looked quite imposing. What on earth is going on in your mind when you try to ruin the reputation of a young girl without evidence? You have a daughter yourself. Mrs. Fu spoke up when she saw the situation. Mr. Ming, it is just a misunderstanding. Mrs. Mrs. Meng has said something wrong and Weiwei has ruined her handbag too. They are even. Let's not ruin your banquet just because of such a trivial matter. She had never expected that Mu Weiwei could have done something that pleased Mr. Ming so that he wanted to set up a blind date for her and his own grandson Ming Yi. Having heard the words, Gu Weiwei did not plan to let the entire matter go away. Instead, she said, as long as Mrs. Meng apologizes to me, I can compensate for the handbag. You? Wu Xiulian snorted. How shameless you are to let the Ming family compensate for you. I meant, I myself will make the compensation, not others. Gu Weiwei said with a low voice. Mrs. Fu frowned in displeasure. If she did not want to get money from the Ming family, she would turn to old lady for the money. What money did she have to make the compensation after she was driven out by the Li family? Ji Qing threw a worried look at Gu Weiwei. This handbag cost almost two million yuan, so where would she get the money for the compensation from? Wu Xiulian threw a look at her own daughter. She understood that if she continued to be stubborn, the Ming family would be displeased. So she clenched her teeth and said, Yes, it was a lie that you seduced men. I apologize for what I have said. Meng Riyot clenched her teeth out of loathing when she saw her mother bending down in front of so many nobles. Mu Weiwei, my mother has apologized. Now, how will you make the compensation? All right. I can force myself to accept the apology. Gu Weiwei nodded, took a step forward and stretched out her hands as she said, If you want me to make the compensation, then I will have to be convinced that your handbag is authentic. Wu Xiulian took out the private things from the bag and handed the empty handbag over to her and said, I spent more than one million on this handbag, and you dare to say that it is not authentic. Gu Weiwei took over the handbag and without even sparing a look at it, she turned to the female guests and said, Which of you are a VIP member of MG? I would like to borrow your member number to call the VIP customer service of the headquarters of MG. Hearing these words, Ming Yi presented his own cell phone and said, When I was studying in Italy, I once bought bags from MG for my mother and aunt. I have their membership number. Having said this, he then dialed the number of the MG headquarters in person and put it on speakerphone too. The moment the call went through, he explained to the receiver in Italian that they would need to communicate in English. He was about to ask Gu Weiwei what she needed to tell the receiver when Gu Weiwei already started speaking to the customer service staff in her pure British English. Hello, someone here has a MG bag and we would like to test if it is authentic. Having heard the words, the customer service receiver said, Ma'am, we can check it out for you through video or photo. You can have the bag delivered to an MG counter for a specialist to take a look at it. Ming Yi cooperatively switched on the camera. The customer service receiver from MG headquarters was a blonde woman. Gu Weiwei vividly showcased the appearance of the bag, the logo inside and explained some details to the receiver in front of the camera. After the customer service receiver observed it for a while and inquired with a serious expression. 
Please, ma'am, does this bag belong to you? Meng Ria took a step forward and said, Excuse me, this bag is mine. When the customer service receiver saw Meng Ria, she asked in a formulation, Please, ma'am, give us your name, nationality as well as your contact information. We will contact you as soon as possible. Meng Ria presented her own name and contact information and threw a cold look at Gu Weiwei. After the examination, she had to turn to old lady of the Fu family and the Ming family for help for the one million compensation fee. Some guests took pleasure in Gu Weiwei's trouble. There were many girls who wanted to become the daughter-in-law of the Ming family so why did this little girl receive the priority? And she was even bragging that she would be able to pay 2 million yuan in cash as compensation. Just look at the cheap dress on her. How would she be able to get 2 million yuan by herself? Luo Qianqian and Ji Qing held their hands tightly together and said in a small voice, How would she be able to get 2 million yuan? Don't worry, grandfather and cousin are on our side. Ji Qing clenched her teeth and said, if she doesn't want grandfather and cousin to cover the bill, I can lend her the money. I have great amounts of gift money from New Year. Compared to the crowd who looked very nervous, Gu Weiwei seemed calm and leisurely. She was patiently waiting for the reply from the MG customer service. After the receiver wrote her notes, she spoke a large paragraph of English with a serious expression. Those guests who understood English started to discuss in astonishment. Meng Ria turned pale instantly and tried hard to communicate with the receiver in English. However, the receiver turned even colder and then hung up the phone directly. Wu Xiulian had no idea what they were talking about, but she had sensed that something was not right. Ria, Ria, what happened? What did MG say? Meng Ria turned to Gu Weiwei who had been calm right from the beginning, and clenched her teeth so tightly in anger that she almost crushed them in her mouth. What is the result? How much must Mu Weiwei pay us? Wu Xiulian tugged at Meng Ria's clothes. Ming Yi threw a surprised look at Gu Weiwei and turned to Wu Xiulian and explained, Mrs. Meng, this bag is not sold by MG and it is not authentic. How could that be possible? I bought it using more than one million yuan. Wu Xiulian just couldn't believe the reality. She turned the bag over and inside out from bottom to top. We have bought MG bags before and the quality as well as the brand symbol are all the same. Xiulian, just forget it. Mrs. Fu tugged at Mrs. Meng who was in a frenzy. She understood English, so she understood the conversation they had with the MG customer service. She said that if I apologize, she will compensate for the damage of the bag. Now she wants to find an excuse for herself. Wu Xiulian was not convinced. She had sullied herself by apologizing to her and now she was not receiving the compensation. Mom, just leave it. Meng Ria tugged at Wu Xiulian awkwardly. She felt so humiliated that she wanted to leave the event as soon as possible. She had taken the opportunity to humiliate Mu Weiwei so that Mrs. Fu could hate her utterly and so that she would never be able to find a husband that belonged to this noble circle. However, she ended up being the one who was humiliated in the end. She was so furious that she wanted to strangle this annoying B asterisk TCH to death. But she couldn't do anything with so many people around. The guests found it amusing to see Wu Xiulian struggling. MG had told them that they had never had this bag on sale before and she was still so cheeky as to ask Mu Weiwei to pay her back. One female guest dressed in a black gown stepped out and explained kindly with a glass in her hand. Mrs. Meng, it is not Mississippi Mu who will be paying you back. It is you who will be paying back MG. At a cocktail party some time ago, she was trying to approach Fu Hanjing but was humiliated by Meng Ria who thought herself a member of the Fu family. Now, it was her turn to exact payback too. 
What are you talking about? Wu Xiulian was astonished. It was Mu Weiwei who had ruined her bag, why must they pay back MG? The female guest in the black gown took a sip of her wine and explained to the guests who had not understood what had happened. Martin Green had already signed with the Gu family from Land A five years ago as the private designer for Gu Weiwei, the daughter of Gu Enterprise. During their collaboration time, all the works designed by him were not allowed to be sold on the market but became the private products of the Gu family. This bag was the one that Gu Weiwei had when she was attending the royal banquet of a land and a minor designer who quit from MG copied this bag and sold it at a very high price. What you have bought is the forgery designed by him and the authentic product belongs only to Gu Weiwei, the daughter of the Gu family. Two months ago, Deborah, a famous singer from S Land attended the press release of her new album with this bag but ended up being taken to court by MG and the Gu family. She finally made a compensation of more than 4 million yuan. MG had already published the announcement on their official website that this bag was not authentic and they are in the process of getting every single piece back. Wu Xiulian was flipping between either being startled or angry so much so that she almost passed out. How could this be, possible? We paid for this bag too. The female guest in black gown smiled with schadenfreude, facing the troubled woman as she continued. MG pays a great deal of attention to their brand image and the daughter of the Gu family has never liked to share her things with anyone else. That is why the Gu family hired Martin Green to become the private designer for their daughter so that she alone is able to enjoy unique and perfect products. You better pray to God that you won't be asked to make a large amount of compensation, considering that both MG and the Gu family would both hire their lawyers. Hearing that she was involved with the Gu family, Wu Xiulian dropped her bag onto the floor. However ignorant she might be, she was fully aware of how powerful and lethal the Gu family were. They belonged to the nobility in a land and they were also almost prestigious tycoons. There was never a good ending for anyone who irritated the Gu family. Gu Weiwei threw a cold look at the exquisite and expensive leather bag on the floor. She hated this bag to the deepest parts of her bones. Because after Ling Yen saw this bag, she had loved it so much that she asked her to give it to her as a present. That woman had asked F.O.T. too many things from her, including her life and her heart. She felt extremely annoyed when she saw Wu Xiulian holding this bag and showing it off in front of her face. For a long while, Wu Xiulian still could not believe what was happening. She threw a fierce look at Gu Weiwei. What did you do with the phone call? Who would even know if that was really M.G.? What do you know about M.G. as a teenager from high school? Mrs. Meng, I made the call. Ming Yi reminded her with a low voice. You can wait until you receive the legal letter from M.G. to see whether or not that call was really from the company. Gu Weiwei smiled lightly, showing coldness in her eyes. Mu Weiwei might not know much about the fashion industry or luxurious goods, but she had grown up in the Gu family and what she had seen and used were far beyond Wu Xiulian's reach and imagination. Ever since she was twenty years old, Martin Green, the designer of MG, had already become the private designer of the Gu family. He designed her clothes, shoes, bags and ornaments for the four seasons in a year and no one knew MG better than she did. The moment Wu Xiulian appeared in front of her with this bag, she had already known that it was a forgery. She had not wanted to irritate her, neither had she wanted to give her a lesson, but that woman had not been able to keep her mouth shut, so Gu Weiwei thought it was time to teach her a lesson after all. Wu Xiulian might not believe what had happened, but the crowd did. It is just a forgery and she even has the cheek to show it off and ask for compensation. Now she has smashed her own feet with her own stone. She is totally humiliated, let alone the large amount of compensation she has to make to M.G. and the Gu family. 
but they didn't know that it was a forgery, maybe they would not lose this case. The Gu family are famous for being unreasonable. No one has a good ending with them as long as they irritate the Gu family, the reason why the Gu family signed Martin Green to create products for them is because they want something special and perfect. The Gu family would never forgive those who have made a copy of the things from their family and then showed it off. It will get nasty when they are displeased. They have even been able to sign the designer of a luxurious brand as their private designer for so many years. How much money do they have? Meng Ria was calmer than her mother Wu Xiuyin. She turned to Gu Weiwei with a wronged face. Weiwei, I have been treating you as a sister since I got to know you for the first time. I have been giving you clothes and accessories all the time. What on earth have I done that you now treat me like this? Hearing these words, the crowd could not help but feel sorry for Meng Ria and her mother. They had been treating this girl so nicely but now they had been harmed so seriously. This Mu Weiwei was way too ruthless. So she had known about the news from MG and then she caused trouble by scratching the bag on purpose. Gu Weiwei raised the corner of her lips, took a step forward and stared at the diamond necklace around Meng Ria's neck and said, Sister Ria, you did give me clothes and shoes but have I also not given you my most precious thing? This diamond necklace is my mother's legacy. The female guest dressed in the black gown threw a look at the diamond necklace around Meng Ria's neck and said, This neck is worth more than 10 million yuan at least, and it is her mother's legacy too. It is worth much more than all the clothes you have given her altogether. You have taken great advantage of this little girl and even blamed her for setting you up but you irritated and provoked her first. Should I replay the video so that people can watch what just happened a minute ago? Meng Ria was totally speechless. She did trick Mu Weiwei into giving her the diamond necklace, claiming that it would be a good way for her to court Fu Hanjing. Mrs. Fu also knew that this necklace was given by Mu Weiwei, so Meng Ria simply could not just tell lies by saying that this necklace did not belong to Mu Weiwei in front of Mrs. Fu. Mrs. Fu threw a look at Wu Xiulian who had turned pale. She patted Meng Ria's shoulder and said with a gentle voice, All right, your mother looks unwell, bring her back to take a rest. It would be very difficult for the mother and the daughter to stay a minute longer at this celebration especially when the situation was becoming increasingly ugly for them. She was indeed satisfied with Meng Ria and thought of her as a good candidate for her daughter-in-law. She was gentle, kind and caring, but her mother was indeed an embarrassment. Meng Ria was not convinced. But she understood that there was no need for them to stay here when the situation was going against their will. She waved goodbye to the Ming family politely and went out of the club with her tail between her legs, holding Wu Xiulian by one arm. As the evening fell, the lights of the club were all on, dazzling and bright. People who were well dressed made toasts to each other and none of them seemed to have been affected by the incident of the Meng family. Ming Zong Yuan did not like engaging himself in social activities. So he stayed with the children in the yard whilst the lady of the Ming family was in the banquet hall receiving the guests. Mrs. Fu, you seem to know Mississippi Mu as well. The lady of the Ming family could tell that the old master was planning to set up a date for her daughter and the girl, but what had happened today made her feel a bit uncomfortable. A girl from an old friend. She lost her family and the old lady adopted her into the Fu family. Mrs. Fu did not like Mu Weiwei that much, but she did not badmouth her behind her back, because that would make her an uncivilized person. Also, if Mu Weiwei ended up being with Ming Yi, she would give up on Fu Hanjing and that would save the Fu family a great deal of trouble. In the yard, Gu Weiwei had thought that it would be an awkward blind date. Yet Ming Yi was gentle, friendly, funny, and humorous. He took great care of the three young ladies. Also, he had noticed that her throat was not feeling well, 
so he asked his servant to get her hot drinks that were good for the throat. She was also served some mild food, and that made her feel that she was not on a blind date but at an interesting gathering with friends. Ji Ching did not pay much attention to the food on the table but stared at her cell phone screen the whole time. She did not stop until Ming Zong Yuan scolded her. I am trying to find what Gu Weiwei looks like. She seems to be a huge tycoon. Gu Weiwei's lip corner twitched as she was sitting right next to her. Ah, why are there no pictures of her face? Ji Ching put down her cell phone in disappointment as she mumbled, It is so difficult to imagine how a noble lives, when she can have Martin Green as her private designer and wears the limited version of the luxurious brand. Gu Weiwei smiles politely. It was not a very strange life for a noble from a land. The Gu family, however, was just trying to offer something better to her. Ji Qing gave up searching for news. Instead, she blinked at Gu Weiwei. Weiwei, don't you think that my cousin is extremely good-looking? Gu Weiwei laughed dryly, I can't say anything else since you say so. Ji Qing asked with a bright smile, have you considered marrying him? Ming Zong Yuan added, I told you that my grandson is excellent. He has designed many famous buildings abroad. Ming Ye's smile stiffened. He took a sip at the wine without showing an expression. Grandpa, she is still young. Gu Weiwei nodded and said, Yes, I am really still young. Not that young. You are eighteen years old. You can have a relationship for two years and then get married later. That would be right on time. Ming Zong Yuan said without caring about what others were thinking. I don't think that works. Gu Weiwei answered with a dry smile. This old man simply had no idea who his grandson had a crush on so he had set up a blind date for her. Ming Yi took another sip of the wine trying to press down something when he saw Ji Qing persuading Gu Weiwei to become her cousin-in-law. After talking for a while, Ming Zong Yuan asked Ji Qing and Luo Qianqian to take a walk, leaving her and Ming Yi behind. Seeing the group going away, Ming Yi smiled with an apologetic smile. Sorry, my grandpa is used to making the decisions here for everyone. He wants to have a hand in everything. Gu Weiwei smiled lightly, but I do think that, you should tell Ji Qing the truth as soon as possible, otherwise you will have to be a cousin forever. Ming Yi never expected that she would say something like this, so he became slightly startled. You, my little angel are the words written on the necklace, right? And it is a necklace that shows love in foreign countries. Gu Weiwei told him what she had discovered. Ming Yi smiled helplessly. You did not tell her, did you? Gu Weiwei shook her head. Not yet, but I think that you better tell her yourself. Thanks, I will when she grows a bit older. Ming Yi said. After the dinner, Ming Yi arranged a car to drive her and Luo Qianqian home whilst he himself gave Ji Qing a lift. The moment Gu Weiwei entered the room, the fixed phone in the living room rang. She knew pretty well that it must be from the man she had blocked on her cell phone. Therefore, she pulled the cable out without answering the call, creating a peaceful quietness throughout the entire apartment. After the banquet at the club, Mrs. Fu received a call from Mang Ruya. Aunt, I just received an email from M.G. They will send a lawyer here for negotiation and the lawyers from the Gu family are coming too. I really didn't know that it was a copy. Having heard Mang Ruya's words, Mrs. Fu calmly asked, How is your mother? Not so well. Her sickness has come back. She has just taken her medicine and laid down. She did not even eat a single bite at dinner. Mang Ruya sounded wronged. Mrs. Fu's heart softened after hearing what she had said. She did not have a daughter herself and because of the frequent visits of Mang Ruya, 
she had already regarded her more or less as a daughter. Don't worry, I will discuss it with Han Zheng. We will help you solve the problem be it from the Gu family or MG. Thank you so much aunt, you are the one who treats me the best, Meng Ria stopped sobbing and said with gratitude. Since the old lady liked Mu Weiwei, what she had to do now was to cling to Mrs. Fu. After all, Mrs. Fu had always had a soft heart and liked her, and if she agreed to help her, there would definitely not be any problems. As for Mu Weiwei who had humiliated her on the issue of Priam's painting and also on this occasion, she would be well prepared to pay her back next time. As Mrs. Fu returned to the mansion of the Fu family, she saw Fu Shiqin at home for dinner after work as well. Shiqin, when will your brother be back? In a couple of days, why? Fu Shiqin asked in astonishment. His mother never asked them about work. Mrs. Fu asked the servant to pour some water, sat down at the table and recounted what had happened at the club today and said, M.G. and the Gu family may have sent their lawyers for negotiation so send the best lawyer from your company to solve this problem for Ruya. Fu Shiqin put down his bowl feeling nauseated and said, after letting out a sigh, her again. The lawyers from our legal department are busy dealing with the Wilsons on the collaboration details, they do not have time to care about her. She is your future sister-in-law, we must help her family because she will be part of our family soon too. Mrs. Fu said, sounding intimidating. After hearing those words, old lady put down her bowl and chopsticks in displeasure, losing all desire of eating anything more. What do you mean by future sister-in-law? She bought a forgery of Priam's painting and almost screwed up the signing with the Wilsons. If Mu Weiwei had not recognized the painting in time and persuaded Mr. Ming to spare us one, the business deal worth tens of billions of yuan would have collapsed. Does she really like forgeries? She buys a forged painting in a forged bag, she is always causing so much trouble. Fu Shiqin complained unhappily. Mu Weiwei. Mrs. Fu frowned slightly. So Mu Weiwei had helped to finish the deal with the Wilsons. She did not quite believe that she would be so capable, but if it had not been because of the deal, she could not figure out what else would have made Mr. Ming defend her in this way today. Mom, it is a matter if you like Meng Ria, but it is another if brother doesn't. Fu Shiqin said, lifted the bowl and continued with the food. Also, my brother has a girlfriend now anyways. A girlfriend. Mrs. Fu and Fu Xingying, who was busy reading his newspaper in silence, were both very surprised. Seeing the disbelief on their faces, Fu Shiqin took out his cell phone and showed the picture he had snapped at the morning meeting and presented it in front of his parents' faces. Look at the wounds on brother's lip. It must have been bitten by a girl when they were kissing.